trying to determine what people want and like isn't easy, and predicting the future is even more difficult. But that's what automotive designers do. They identify styling trends years before a new car is launched. On this week's show, automotive designers describe what it's like to figure out the future. And now, here's your host, John McElroy. I want to thank you all for joining us on AutoLine this week. Today we're going to have a fun show. It's all about design. Where in the world is automotive design going? There's a lot going on in terms of materials, colors, and other things, and we've got three experts to talk about it today, including Chris Benjamin, he's the head of the Fusion Studio, as well as Jeep Passenger Car Utility Vehicle Interior Design at Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. Great to have you here today, thank you Chris. For having me. Therese Panazzo is a design manager with Buick Exteriors at General Motors, and great to have you here. Thank you. Garen Nikogosian is a design manager at Ford, and great to have you here as well, Garen. Thank you. So let's get started. Chris, first off, I gotta ask you, it says here you're the head of Fusion Designer, Fusion Studio, what the heck does that mean? Well, Fusion is, um, the reason we called it Fusion was it's a, it's a melding of different talents, right? So we look at all of the advanced stuff, future trends and, and research and um, really defining, you know, vehicle architectures and, and future, you know, form languages, so. Well, that's and interesting. exterior interior. You say architectures because y I thought the engineers all decided or the manufacturing people decided the architecture and then made you guys make it look good. Yeah, well, we work in conjunction. We work as a, as a group because the architecture, the key of the architecture is to create a proportion that you know will look good once you've styled it. Um, and really part of the design job is not just styling it, but it's making sure the hardware is in the right place with the engineer so that you can do it, you get the great interior package, and you get a car that from the outside looks great as well. Yeah, Garen, is that what you guys do at Ford too? There's a lot of collaboration amongst different disciplines. That's really the key. I mean, the idea is to be able to not only make something that's aesthetically pleasant, but at the same time it has to be functional as a product. And when those two come together, and sometimes you get projects that really illustrate the uh, importance and the, uh, and the fluidity of this uh, union, per se. Yeah, absolutely, 100%, uh, 100% what Chris is saying. Therese, same thing? Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, GM's really, really looking into the future. You know, where is transportation going? What do our customers need just to get around? And, and the landscape is going to be completely different, I think, very soon. Sooner than a lot of people probably expect. Yeah, what, what, yeah. when you say looking into the future, what are you looking at? I think that, you know, obviously autonomy is, is one piece of it. Uh, electric vehicles are another piece of it. And so we've got, um, we're, we're formulating groups that have design and engineering um, sort of um, advanced uh, user interface um, happening like all at one time. And, and we're trying to um, formulate a vision of what we, where we think everything is going. Um, we, we also want to understand how quickly the public can cope with change because, you know, it, it is going to be changing quite drastically. Um, and so we want it to be comfortable for everyone. And so we're, we're trying to keep that in mind at the same time. I always thought that it was marketing's job to figure out what's the customer going to want and then feed that information back to, to design. But yeah. it seems like you guys are right in there in the mix. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, I mean, like in our Fusion Studio, we, we work very closely with, you know, portfolio planning and our research team, right? So when we're working on concepts and themes, um, they'll go out and prod and poke, you know, different groups and, and see what kind of reactions they get um, because you really, it's twofold, right? You you want to get opinions, but you don't really. People look to us as the experts, right? So, mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, people don't really know what they want until they see it, yeah. right? So, we want to know what people think, but we don't necessarily need the solution. It's just about trends, behaviors, mm -hmm. um, those sorts of things that we look at. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so you got to look at all these things, but uh, of what might be happening, whether it's technologically, culturally, or ha what have you. It's up to design to interpret that and turn it into a car, right? Yep, one of the cogs in the uh, overall product creation cycle is obviously design. And it's probably the one that's got the most amount of raw intuition as to how to process these kinds of information and bring it to fruition, not only for an external point of view that you're making your customer's life better and something that your product or service that you're offering is something that they want, but internally you're also 
finding yourself to be a bit of the glue between mo many of the other disciplines. Because you might not necessarily have the knowledge to be the expert in, say, powertrain or chassis or marketing. However, you've got a good glimpse of what each one of these things does to the overall perception of the brand that might actually help the conversation go towards a better product overall. On that topic, and you touched on it just briefly, um, we're at the, probably the biggest change our industry is gonna see. Why do you say that? Well, because the last time something this major happened to mobility and movement was probably the dawn of the automobile. Mm -hmm. And then right after, or right around the same time was the, well, was our ability to harness a little bit of the sky. So for us, at this mm -hmm. point in time, I mean, this is incredible times because mm -hmm. the future is not something that you just simply predict. It's just tailoring the expectation of your customers mm -hmm. and making sure that the company and what you're working on is able to really fully realize their dreams, be relevant, and just the next step. So as a designer, this is what you go to school for. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, we just, we just long to create, right? And it, it's, it's odd because, you know, whenever you tell someone you're a designer, the, the next question they ask you is, oh, so you're an engineer? <laughs> and, <laughs> right, and, 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 sure. <laughs> right. See, I would, know, I, I would ask, what, what color are the crayons in your box, yeah, yeah, you know? Right. Exactly. Well, that's how we, that's, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases, that's how we qualify it. We say, no, no, we're, we're actually, we're artists mm -hmm. that, you know, have honed that skill into something that, you know, is combined with science and technology and that's what makes design what it is, you know. Yeah. But it's, it's, not, the art, it's the artistic side of it. That right, but it's not just design design, right? So, so Therese, yeah. you're with Buick Exterior. Mm -hmm. So you've got to take all this interpretation where things are going, but you've got to interpret it in a Buick way. Sure. How, how do you do that? I mean, sure. certainly there's design cues that you can call on from the past, but Absolutely. you don't want to just call on the past all the time. Uh, I think, I mean, a lot of it, I, I personally think is intuition. I mean, I'm... I'm certainly, I, I, all of our personalities are different. I'm sort of a touchy-feely type where I, I, I use my intuition a lot. I think a lot of designers are kind of like that. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we talk about the customer and um, the, the how, how maybe the landscape of transportation is going to change so quickly. Mm -hmm. And they may have not visualized that quite yet. Um, our job is to do that. You know, we, we always use, you know, the iPhone as an example, you know, the, the, that, that maybe people wouldn't have really believed that they would be so connected to such a thing, this object, right? But we've got to start to think about what the, the, the vehicle or, or transportation generally will mean to people in the future. And we have to um, um, create teams uh, with people from different disciplines who can create a vision that's very clear and kind of feed people that vision because you know you're right like we 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 can always ask the customer exactly what they want but sometimes they may not know exactly what they want and so we have to try to formulate that vision for them and, and then feed it back to them. No, I totally agree. I think mm -hmm. most customers have no clue. I think you said it, Chris. They Until they, they see it, then they go, it. wow, I love yeah, that. But they never would right. have known that before. Yeah. Right. I want to come back to this point, though, that Therese just raised, intuition. How much can you rely on mm -hmm. intuition? I will say some of the best car designs ever mm -hmm. in history was one person with inspiration and intuition. But mm -hmm. I don't think that you can pull that off all the time. You'd be surprised. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we try to make educated guesses, right? And there are a lot of smart people in the building, right? We don't, we don't try to be, um, have the most knowledge about every subject, but we know to surround ourselves with subject matter experts, right? And, and our intuition is, well, we take all of that input and what do we think should be done with it? How should that be executed? Right. You know, what is going to make someone respond to it emotionally because that's that's what cars are that's what it is right the whole you know it's the magic behind the automobile that that makes what we do so fun and so interesting and it's because you're you're touching people in a different way than just you know a pair of socks or a, a belt they put on every day it's a, it's a special thing right yep. cars are an experience mm. and if you tailor the experience the rewards are that much greater so if you look at it from that perspective, each vehicle is going to have its own unique experience. A delivery vehicle is a completely different experience than a sports car. And I've had a, the pleasure of working on some pretty cool things on the sporting side, 
GT being the last thing I worked on. So do you really get that one-to-one -one connection with your customer and the job of the vehicle. But it's not exactly any different than when you work on a on a Fusion, not your studio, but our car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was waiting thing. for that one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same thing, you're tailoring an experience. And I think those of us who really understand as a company what your customer's expectations are and where, where they want to go with it, that is the key. It's not so much about what makes a certain vehicle versus another. It's by going down this road of investing in our product and what we've put into it, where are you going with it? Where, is it? Is it enriching the experience or the activity or, or the ownership? And it could be different things. You know, It could be lap times to bring in boxes to your front door. It doesn't make a difference. But a car is a billion dollar investment. It's a big roll of the dice sure of an automaker. So I, I, I totally get what you're saying about intuition, but mm. you've got to also have some sort of checks and balances. And yet there's a danger in that, right? So you can clinic a car to death, where you come out with something that pleases everybody but then nobody wants. How do you, how do you draw that line between intuition and clinics and, and checking what you're doing? Well, I mean, we've got, you know, Sergio, who's the big boss, right? So, I mean, uh, Ralph, who I work for, he... Ralph Jill's the yeah. head of design for FCA. So he um, has monthly design reviews with him. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, all of Ralph's colleagues, you know, there's a board of management who are very educated in all aspects of a vehicle. And so um, the checks and balances are, are there for sure. That is, that is without question uh, part of the process. But... Um, we, for example, do not clinic designs. We don't really. Do that. No. How, how about Buick? Do you, uh, Therese, do you, do you clinic cars? We do. And, and we, Garrett, yes. you, you guys too? Yeah, it depends on a project. I mean, certain so, projects. Uh, for example, the last thing I worked on, we did not clinic. That was a pretty. That was the GT. Yep, though. We didn't need to clinic yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. we do clinic other products. It's a it's a condition. Wait, is there something new at FCA ideas. that you don't? No, I mean, we clinic ideas. We clinic. Um, you know, different aspects of vehicles, Why do new you features. not clinic? Um, well, because like I said, when you do a clinic, you're, you're asking normal people what they think the future should be like for an automobile. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't really know, right? Mm -hmm. They have a feeling about what they like, what they don't like when they see it. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when we get further in the process, we do smaller clinics, but it's, it's sort of like with the car we've, we've chosen, the one we've, so we, we don't do clinics. We don't, for example, have, three cars that we send to clinic and mm -hmm. one comes out the winner, you know. Um, I've worked at other places where, where that's done and I mean you can look at it both ways. It, it can be beneficial um, because you get sort of a pulse on if it's too far, if it's not far enough. You know, we've, we've all been involved in clinics where mm -hmm. if something is polarizing, mm -hmm. you usually know you're on the right track. Yeah. If everyone right, likes it, it'll right. get old fast. Yeah, right, so, right, 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 yes. So you sort of have to know what to do with clinic results. Actually, the, you said some really interesting things, like, because I think, I think it, at least at Buick, it, in GM, you know, we, we will clinic, um, but we're, we're clinic, to, we're trying to really understand or get to the heart of what do you like and, and why? Mm -hmm. Or like, what, what can, don't can, you can like and why? people explain that, the why? Um, sometimes they can't. Sometimes they can't, and, and you know we'll, we'll ask a lot of questions around it, and they can't really maybe articulate it. Um, but I think that we, we go in just to get enough hints, like gather just enough information to just maybe steer things subtly, uh, not necessarily to you know, take every verbatim and go back and design a car around what the customer is telling us to do. It, it's just to kind of understand like why they might be drawn to something, why they may not be, or it, you know, so, some things they're not drawn to are just because they're too far out there. And then we're like, oh, maybe we should maybe be doing that. <laughs> you know, maybe this is, yeah, right. Maybe we're onto something. So it's not always, we don't always take it literally maybe, but we're, we're gathering information. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Garrett, if you do something like the Ford GT, I mean, it, isn't that almost <laughs> easy to do? No, because, no, no. no what, pretty heavy if what, you what, that one oh, oh, yeah, you messed that. Right. <laughs> what I'm getting at, though, is this. What a purpose-built car. You know exactly what that thing is supposed to do. It's supposed to go out and win the 24 hours of Le Mans in its class. And it's supposed to be this halo for the rest of the Ford Motor Company. Very few people are going to buy it. It's $400,000. Doesn't that help really narrow 
It does. Yeah. It does. I mean, but you understand you, that customer far yeah, easier, that don't you? That one customer, though, is just as critical, if not a hundred times more critical than your average customer. Mm -hmm. But the thing that to take away from the, from the GT, it's not necessarily just the fact that that's what it was. For me, the coolest part of that program was that it was a pioneer in the way we we did business on that particular car. What do you mean? We managed mean? to, we, we shrunk time with that car, not just in lap times and acceleration and winning Le Mans and that sort of thing, but also the time it takes to get something from a thought to an actual entity, one that can be sold, raced, and you know talked about. So for us, that was a pretty cool experience. And we had a small, very dedicated team. I'm sure that your studio that you mentioned is very much like in the same, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm phase where the, the, the idea doesn't win. The best of everyone's opportunities and, and experience is what, what leads it. And this is something that was really encouraging for me as a designer. For the first time, we were, we were celebrating people's expertise and what they're good at for the greater good of the program. And we shrunk the time down. We didn't do the typical clinics that we do on this right. particular car because mm -hmm. it was a bit more, uh, it's, a, it's really an understood project. We knew what it was, uh, you know, it's, it's an icon within Ford as well as the automotive world. So it was an easy thing to draw on, but at the same time quite intimidating. The job was understood, but the path we took was very efficient. One of the best collaborations I've ever had with the other disciplines, such as aerodynamics, air, uh, air the racing folk, the marketing folk, mm -hmm. PD, the money people, you, you name it. It was probably the most streamlined and the best. Are there lessons learned from that that you can take for more Absolutely. mass ma market yeah, products? Yeah. These are the things you don't unlearn. What, what, so. what, are, what are some of the examples that you at Ford might take out of the GT program and ap apply to some of the others? There was an efficiency with which the, the, the number's far too great to, come to sort of cover in this, in this discussion of ours, but the real takeaway from that was the efficiencies you get in being very dedicated to what you're going to deliver and understanding what the end result was in this case. So in our case, obviously you've, you've outlined what it was, but that, does, uh, that applies the same to autonomous vehicles. It applies exactly the same to delivery vans and uh, you know, hot hatches and sedans and trucks alike. Recognize what it's for, make sure you deliver the best possible solution for the problem at hand, and you'd be amazed how much more efficient the world becomes and how much easier the collaboration gets. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's, that, that was the experience for us. Yeah. Going back to Buick for the moment, it, mm -hmm. it's got this, this tremendous history. I mean, right. the, the first concept car in the industry was the Buick Y job. Right. So, and uh, speaking of concept cars, Buick mm -hmm. a couple of years ago did one called the Avenir, yes. which people flipped over. Yes. What yeah. did they flip over? It comes back to what you were talking about before, Therese, of what are they actually seeing? What do they mm -hmm. think they're seeing? Can they communicate to you why they like that car? And then how do you take some of those elements and put them into mass production? Right. You know, I, I have to be honest, I, I don't know exactly what they were feeling, but when they looked at it and why they loved it, but I think that it just made them very emotional. There was an emotional impact there. Again, it goes back to intuition, you know, um, you can't always sort of come up with a list of like uh, uh, bulleted content or something that might please a customer completely. Or you can, but if you don't deliver on this emotional impact when they see a vehicle, the proportion, the lines, like the sculpture, the beauty of the vehicle, um, then it doesn't matter what all these, you know, bulleted lists that you've went over a million times or have gotten from clinics, it, it just, it, that doesn't matter anymore. It, it comes down to really making an impact emotionally with somebody. And, um, and, and you know, sometimes that's a hard thing to really nail down, but I think that as human beings and designers in the studio, that's what we do every day. You know, mm -hmm. we, we look at the vehicles every day. We're taping on them every day. We're, we're taking them outside and looking at how the sun like reflects on them. and. And we, we are emotional people as well. So I think that we can relate to generally, you know, the public. And, and so if we see something that is really like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, I think that we believe that other people will see that too. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that that's really important is not to, is, is always to keep that in mind. And as much as we have to keep cost balance and content balance and all these other things, um, you know, those, that all those things are a part of our job and making sure that everything meets criteria. Um, 
the, the emotional impact when you first see a vehicle, the exterior, and when you sit inside a vehicle and how you feel, just how you feel, you know? We always call it the experience, but you know, it's the, the way the space and the environment moves around your body and, and how easy it is to reach something and just like these, these little nuances that are so important and, and just us being human beings and being feeling human beings, I think we have to use that intuition to design generally. Chris, where do, you, where do you see things going now? I mean, uh, we, you know, we've touched on autonomy a little bit, electrification mm -hmm. a, a tiny little bit, but I, I gotta believe you go out to auto shows, probably other fashion venues, and the, where do you go and what are you looking for? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Too big a question? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I think, you know, as for, for us as designers, we find inspiration in everything we do everything we see, you know, walking through the airport, uh, flying somewhere. If you go to a country you've never been to before, you know, you look at the architecture, you look at the roads, you look at how people dress, you know, all of that stuff. Auto shows, I would say, um, we go and we enjoy them. We look at concept cars and we're like, wow, that's cool, look what they did. Um, we don't go there necessarily for inspiration because if it's at an auto show, they did it a few years ago, Yeah. right? So mm -hmm. it's a bit late to get inspiration from it, but that's more about appreciating what your colleagues in the industry are doing, right? It's more about, you know, and, and we all run into each other at the shows and we, we converse and we exchange ideas and, you know, kind of very openly. Um, so it's more, about, it's more about the appreciation of the industry at the auto shows, but the inspiration stuff, I mean, geez, if I think about, you know, the, the countries I've been to in this world and, and how different they all are and how different cultures are, um, those are the things that you, um, you don't take note of uh, consciously, but as a creative person, you, your subconscious makes a note of, of everything you've experienced and it, it sort of comes out, you know. And, and sometimes in the oddest times, you know, if I'm reviewing a, a sketch that one of my designers did and some, something will hit me like the sketch reminds me of something else and then we sort of start spitballing about how that can be developed, you know, where else can it go. Um, and, and we do that too with within other groups, you know, for example, we have our user experience team and they look at things from a, from a, a, a very different, you know, approach. Very practical, right? No, not, not no? practical at all. It's more, <laughs> it's, it's, it's what, what Therese was saying about the emotion, right? Mm -hmm. Because the experience of a vehicle is about evoking emotion in someone. Um, especially if you think about, you know, cars as they, as they reach higher and higher uh, transaction prices, right? No one needs an $80,000 car, right? They want it, they desire it. And how do you create that desire in someone, right? And so that's why um, that emotional side is so important and why the experience is so important. It's like um, just, just at the Detroit show when Mike Manley, he's the head of Ram and Jeep brands, when he was unveiling the new Ram and he talked about the 12 inch screen in there, right? I mean, I was sitting in the back of the, the conference room, of the mm -hmm. press conference, and there were literally gasps in the room because no one expected us to do it. Not in a pickup. Right, <laughs> right. not in a pickup truck. So, you know, but that was um, something we did to enhance the experience, you know. Uh, Ryan Nagoti, who's my colleague, he does, you know, RAM performance and, and commercial. Uh, you know, I remember we always had conversations about, you know, that as, as, it, was, as it was going on. And, you know, it was like, what can we do that's, that's gonna really make people go, wow, what, why'd they do that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the brand teams, the, you know, marketing teams, everyone was kind of like thinking the same thing. Like, we look at what's gonna create that wow factor, mm -hmm. right? Yep. What's, because it's a pickup truck, right? Mm -hmm. And pickup trucks are, are great, people use them for utility, but it's not just that, because we have, we have Rams that get up, like I said, $80,000, I mean, mm -hmm. What is that person buying besides a pickup bed, mm -hmm. right? It's the experience. It's the, emotion. the It's it's an interaction. Like you know, what she's talking about, you know, you get inspiration from the interaction. For me, it's yeah. about watching somebody interact with the product in this country and other countries in this market and this demographic versus the other age group. You name it. It's that interaction. And you start to tap into that to understand what does that mean. Do you How see do you public that? taste changing Absolutely, faster? Absolutely, all the time. Yeah, it changes and it becomes more personalized because you certainly can personalize the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So that becomes an even more difficult thing to tap into because 
now the cookie cutter, this version versus that version, is just not good enough. So you need to always be able to make that experience of, of interacting with the vehicle or the product be tailored to you, more customizable, more personalizable. In that sense, it's, it's quite a bit of a, um, a shift in, in where the industry is headed. So the inspiration is products that do that well, cultures that take most advantage of that when you go see their day-to-day -day activities and so on and so forth. Yeah. yeah, Therese, we're coming down to the, the, the last minute or so here, mm -hmm. so I'll need a quick answer. But it seems to me that more than ever, trying to figure out what people are going to want in the mm -hmm. future because of this move to mobility, electric right. cars, autonomous cars, and like, mm -hmm. I got to believe the, the emphasis is on, more, uh, is on that more than it ever has been. It is. It absolutely is, without a doubt. But I, I think for me, like, what I find the most fascinating about design generally is, like, we've got three designers from three different companies here. And in this day and age, we are being exposed to information constantly on the internet, the same information. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, they call it synchronicity, but, like, what, what the most interesting thing is, like, how will we interpret that information? Yep. into a product in a different way. Because in the past, we weren't getting this information all at the same time, but we are now. So like even, you know, amazing fashion or an amazing product that might inspire all three of us, we're gonna see it at the same time now. So what does that mean for the product? <laughs> and how do we keep them completely different and make sure that we are giving the customer, each individual customer, exactly what they want? I find that the most fascinating thing about like the future right now, just yeah. the information. Well, I, actually, I find this whole conversation very <laughs> fascinating. So I want to thank all three of you. We're going to unfortunately have to wrap it up right now. But mm -hmm. Chris Benjamin with FCA, Therese Panazzo with Buick, and Garen Nikogosian with Ford. I want to thank all three of you for sharing your views on design. Oh, this thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much.